guys, this is Ruthie with the Popo Backyard Farm. Here's a little tip on some ways to earn a little bit of extra cash and clean out your garage in the bargain. If you're like most of us, this time of the year, you start feeling a little bit shut and not too bad, but we're getting into January and we still have a few more months up here in the Northeast, at least for the winter. And so... You may want to clean out your old junk <laughs> and list them on Facebook. There's tons of different yard sales, garage sale groups that are close to your area that you can look for and sell your stuff in a garage sale or yard sale right on Facebook. So, like what I'm doing is, I like I have some two big huge paintings that... Obviously, there's not a place for them in my house. Clay and I have been married for five years, and it was really sweet because he had one painting and I had the other, and they matched, and we didn't even know each other. And it was really kind of cool, but there's no place for them, and I don't have a spot for them. So I think we should sell those and get something for them to, you know, even if it's just a little bit of money, even though they were pricey, but what good are they sitting in a back room in storage? somebody else could enjoy them and be a blessing to them and then we could have a little extra money for animal feed or crocheting yarn or something plus they won't get ruined by Mr. Kitty jumping on them <laughs> and also you can list stuff on Craigslist of course and so you know there's all kinds of groups like if if you live in like I live in Red Creek and I can list off in all the surrounding towns around me and um you know, and if somebody wants to buy something, you know, usually between an an hour and a half an hour, somebody will want to come to you. Now, this isn't my stuff I have listed here, but some people list things free. Some people start getting into like $5, $50, $20, you know, $40. I mean, I saw something on here for, well, that one looks <laughs> like a million. <laughs> There's a lot of money there, one. 200 bucks. I mean, it can be anywhere from you know, $3,000 to free, you know, but you can list all kinds of stuff on, you know, and, it, and it's a great way to, um, to grow your capital over the winter. And I mean, my suggestion is take everything you're going to put that you want to get rid of every, each week, put it in a box, list it on, uh, on the yard sales, you know, just list a couple a day. And then whatever you don't sell, just do a big yard sale in the spring. Because that's what we're going to do. Like probably on Mother's Day that weekend when Clay's outside doing his bucket system. I'm going to have a big yard sale and get rid of everything at then. But between now and then, I'll sell off what I can. And what doesn't sell, I'll just sell in the in the spring. And that's the way I'm going to do it this year. Just a good way to get rid of some excess stuff and bless other people. Now, I don't like to price my things really high. I just think it's fruitless. I think if you price your things too high, basically people don't buy it. <laughs> I like to take things I get, like example, if I got something for $100, I just about will sell it for 10 Like almost like a, you know, hardly anything just because I want to get rid of it, but I would like to make a little extra cash. So if you price your stuff too high, you're just going to sit on it. That's my opinion. But, you know, that may not always be true. That's, you know, it's just that if you like something, chances are, um, you know, if you get like emotional attachment to something, it just doesn't, it doesn't sell because the other person has no emotional attachment. They just want to deal. So you got to get yourself on the other side. What would you pay? I mean, would you pay, you know, twenty dollars for something thirty dollars for something or would you just look at it and say you know I'd, I'd give five and then you got to remember too that some people might um hackle with you a little bit you know they might say will you take this or will you take that you know so those are other things you need to be aware of when you're selling things that you know if you priced it low enough most people won't hackle with you either and that's like to me that's a big time waster you know, I like if they ask for less, I mean, I already know the automatic answer will probably be no if I price it low enough. Now, Clay may, on a bigger item, I may do a little bit more, and there might be room to hackle there. But if it's something that's like, like just really super cheap, I probably wouldn't take it, you know, unless they were going to buy a whole bunch of stuff from me or something, and then I might. But that's just because some things, to, you know, it's like, 
I'd keep it myself if it was going to be, you know. And, and that's something I just wanted to toss in there because, you know, when you go to price your stuff, you want to decide if you want to hackle with people or not, you know. But um, different things here, as you see, going down little items that are in there. And so I would definitely, you know, good way to get rid of some stuff. Just go right to Facebook. I didn't even really realize about the groups until people started talking about it. Because I was always one that I would just, like, go to the store and just buy everything. I mean, you can get t-shirts at Walmart for five bucks. You know what I mean? So I would be like, why would I buy anything? But yeah, on the other side, of it, there are people, like where I live, where everything is so far that every time you want to buy something, you have to travel. And so sometimes it's just easier. And then you kind of get yourself a little bit in the attitude of, Gee, the minute I take it off the store, it's kind of like used cars. The minute I take it off the lot, it's worth less anyway. So what's the difference if I buy a shirt that looks brand new and I spend half the money? So I've learned to live a lot different since I lived out further because it's just too hard to get to the stores. And so when you go to list your stuff, especially if you're in the, you know, in the cities and things like that, you know, remember the country people may be willing because they may feel like it's a good bargain and they look at buying different at least I do I don't have to buy like I used to uh, used to used to <laughs> uh, you know everything has to be brand new or it's not right now it's like I don't care about that anymore it's just it's not a priority to me and especially since I used to get rid of a lot of things and um, brand new things and just give it, get rid of them now it's like I think there's probably people out there like me that are just get rid, getting rid of brand new things just because their closets are full and they can't move another inch. I mean, I used to just go to the store and buy black pants just because I didn't know what else to do. I'd be out for the day and I'd be like, yeah, hey, I guess I could use another pair of pants. And then I'd be like, what am I doing with all these black pants? <laughs> Young and dumb. <laughs> but there are people out there like that and, uh, you know, just something to think about. So anyway, that being said... That's an idea for you. Just type in, like, your town. Example, this one, say, Cato, New York. Um, just type in a town, like, Cato, New York, yard sales. And then each town, type in that town in yard sales, garage sales, and you'll start seeing those groups. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care.